one of the highest peaks of consciousness in our age, J. Krishnamurthy spent his life sharing his love of truth with everyone he encountered. Instead of setting up ashrams, he created schools where children could learn in a nurturing physical, mental and emotional environment. While granting the importance of academic excellence, the importance of inquiry and skills and all that we've talked about, he refers to the problem of the human condition, the human predicament. He would like us not to think so much in terms of individual differences, but of how the whole of humanity suffers from fears, anxieties, hopes, ambitions. And for him, both the educator and the child must explore the world of the within. Which is why he talks not so much of the cultivation of thought, but of the limitation of thought. Which is why he's so concerned about the awakening of intelligence. An intelligence which can come into being only through pure observation, only through inquiry, through silences, through freedom, through affection. Located in several picturesque locations in India and abroad, the Krishnamurti schools are vibrant and alive. Their laboratories, where the child's questioning mind can investigate, explore and learn. Free from fear, prejudice, dogma and the sterility of rote learning. And where teachers too can continually learn even as they teach. We have all the facilities of academics, of laboratories and libraries and everything. So children do the both very easily. In fact, they do it much easily and without any pressure. So though the exams cannot be avoided because examination is important, physics is important, mathematics needs to be done. Whether you like it or not, you have to appear for that exam. So all this is kept into mind. But just because the exams are there in class 10, you can't allow the childhood of a child to be spoiled right from class 1 to class 8 and bring up that fear right from the beginning. I think we need not bring up that fear. Children are capable of just taking the exams in 9th and 10th and doing as well as they should have done anywhere else. The Krishnamurti schools have all the facilities that other schools have. But in more conventional schools, facilities, structure and curricula burden and dominate the child. Here the child seems to draw energy from them and uses them as stepping stones on his path of discovery. We have an outline of a curriculum, you know, whether it is um, uh, whether it is a hobby, what are the things that we expect a child to learn uh, and what are the things that we expect them to do in the course of the year. What we do is we try uh, to do as many things but uh, we also uh, give the space to children who are not able to cope with it at the pace at which the others may be doing. The space that is also given to a child to do things her in her own way, you know, the, uh, allowing him to express himself, be creative about uh, whether it is, you know, whether it's a dance form, whether it is an art form, or the way he handles his own uh, project. Dance, celebration and festivity free the mind imbue it with a quality of fertility that welcomes learning. At the Krishnamurti schools, the energy of children, all too often imprisoned by authority and control, finds wings in creativity.
It is only the mind that compartmentalizes work into categories like clean and dirty. In the easy ambience of the Krishnamurti schools, children are equally at home writing songs or cleaning toilets because they see that what is important is not so much what you do as the quality you bring to it. There are many things that attract one to these schools, but the most obvious and fundamental attraction remains their setting. Set in picturesque and natural surroundings that soothe the eyes and calm the spirit, these centers of learning give their students the unique opportunity of growing up in close proximity with nature. They're encouraged to watch the many small miracles of nature in a welcoming silence. And slowly, this kinship with the natural world becomes an abiding, benign presence in their lives. Here it's so beautiful and everything seems so perfect. So when you get back to a very different kind of world outside, you wonder how your child is going to adjust. But I think the kind of values and the kind of happiness and self-assurance that they get in the school is going to give them enough strength and enough uh, happiness to be able to go out and face things with a happy mind and a happy attitude. And I guess if you have that, everything in life, uh, I think uh, things that are difficult wouldn't seem really to be that hard. And with constant interaction with uh, Krishnaji's teachings and and people around them who are very sensitive, they're exposed to a lot of activities, a lot of creativity, a lot of people who, who are uh, capable of giving so much to the world. So when this interaction with such wonderful pe uh, people is there, one hopes that you know, they grow up with a quiet confidence that we are prepared, to, we can face anything in the world. And I think somehow um, a being once born into the world will always survive. But how the person survives is what is important. It's easy for a parent to say that he doesn't want his child punished. Easy to say that he doesn't want rote memorization. It's not so easy for the parent to say, I want my child to learn values which are different from the values which are the norms today. For instance, we have society which says the existing values of consumerism, um, uh, wanting more, having more being much more important than having less. Uh, relating to human beings through what they have rather than what they are as human beings. These are values which we see before us and these are societies telling children all this. And is, a, is, a, is a parent going to make the choice of saying, listen, I want my child to learn how to value people. I want my child to learn the value of working with his hands. I want my child to learn to respect human beings. I would like him to make difficult choices in his life. I would like him to pursue what he really wants to do. Modern students and parents have resigned themselves to large classrooms, fixed and unimaginative curricula, and the blind accumulation of facts and figures. Classes here come as a pleasant surprise. Teachers talk at a level the child can understand and give meaning and relevance to learning by revealing connections between the text and real life. Subjects thus come alive for the children who respond with intelligence in an atmosphere which makes them feel very secure.
when you when you speak when you like when you say the things then you you're the one who learns more because you're saying your ideas uh, whether they're right or not if they're corrected and uh, if they're corrected and then uh, uh, other people say different things then n writing it down uh, doesn't necessarily make you remember it you just write it down and then you might forget to look in the book at least when you say things you understand them when you write it down you not necessarily understand them so while speaking while you say something while you assess your thoughts and all that you get to um, uh you get to learn more like you understand what you're you're learning previous school i uh, i was in uh, there was a, there was a lot of teaching done and in the in that case we just had to copy down what was written on the board and uh, you hardly any had any time to think about what happened you were just copying down and you were just uh, mugging up you no know? but here uh, i realized that uh, the way that it's taught you you have freedom of speech and you can question the teachers and so um, so things become i mean it's uh, whatever start is really interesting i guess it's because they actually enjoy the classes here in uh, there so there's more discipline here in other schools um, people don't enjoy their classes much so they try to cut it and things like that Teachers at these schools are very involved and passionate. When they talk of students' problems or methods, their words seem to come from very deep within. you get a strong feeling that for them this process is more than a job it is woven into the fabric of their existence at meetings such as these teachers exchange ideas ventilate feelings clarify perceptions and as this happens build closer bonds between each other and between themselves and the school most importantly these get togethers complement what they learn from their classroom experience and the classroom in turn provides an admirable laboratory in which they can test the truth of structures and paradigms discussed here it gets translated in my view only where there is a teacher for whom the teachings have become central so in his own life or her own life they're exploring examining finding out they tell the child that look i may know more physics or more maths but i certainly am on the same boat with you in the exploration of let us say fear or uh, anger irritation whatever and in that is developed a rapport with the child where the child opens up i think it is largely the teacher's task that is the only way in which you can implement it there's no system no technique no method for the world of the inside because students are unburdened by fear and the false respect for elders that many young people in our country have no choice but to cultivate they speak openly to teachers about their perceptions
This leads to a rich learning atmosphere and a free exchange of ideas. Discussion and debate are encouraged and teachers readily accept mistakes, as do students. The student-teacher teacher relationship is quite nice, as in I have time to um, meet my teachers and I have personal contact with them. It's not like I just go to class, see my teachers there and come back. Uh, it, it, I have a lot of contact with them and that I think helps my relationship with them as far as class is concerned it's also because I don't have, I'm not intimidated and I don't have a fear of going and approaching them if I have any problems. I used to have a mental block with maths and things, but then I got this class teacher who was, who was very nice and he was my maths teacher as well. So I just got to know him a lot better and he helped me side by side. And I didn't know he was actually helping me with my maths, but I wasn't scared and I wasn't intimidated. So I didn't have a problem of approaching him. And my maths got better and better and better. <laughs> At the Krishnamurti schools, the presence of nature at its most beautiful permeates everything, and the classroom is no exception. In a situation not without distinct echoes of ancient India and its gurukuls, children hear tales of days gone by even as the wind whispers amidst the leaves overhead. The world being the way it is, many of us think of being competitive and of striving for excellence as being synonymous. Even a brief visit to the Krishnamurti schools will demonstrate that this is not so. Children play the game with intensity and a desire to play well and win, not with an obsession of winning at any cost. In India there are schools at a number of places. Rishi Valley School in Andhra Pradesh, Rajgarh School at Varanasi, the school at Madras, the Valley School at Bangalore, Bal Anand in Bombay, and new schools have just been started at Pune and Uttarkhand. Looking abroad, there are schools in the USA, England, and Canada. The Krishnamurti schools are more than centers of learning. In many gentle and subtle ways, they create another world for the child to live in, to learn in, and to delight in.
What do children take away when they leave the school and go out into the world? They take a kindredness with nature, a certain meditativeness, and an ability to be self-contained. Ex-students have usually found it easy to fit into the outside world, though they do remain their own people. You often hear people say that schools like these are very elitist and only cater to the upper classes. At Rishi Valley, we discovered this was clearly not the case. Although the main school does have children predominantly from the upper middle class, there is a rural school that is doing great work and fast becoming a model for education in the state. Apart from this, many schools have been set up with local talent and resources in the villages. Children from the main school are very involved in this process. We had the slot for general activities and rural education was offered to us. And I like, I like going to villages and interacting with them, finding out what their problems are. Because it's a very, it's a very rural education is sometimes very cliched and people don't know what exactly is going on. So I want to know what's happening behind, behind the scenes. So I like going and talking to the villagers, sharing their joys and sorrows. And I, um, I would say that, I wouldn't say I became more sensitive, but when I go out, I, I reflect upon it and it, it has helped me a great deal because I've understood them and I don't, I don't only know one class of people. I know what's going on, you know, the people who, from the grassroots level. Children at these Krishnamurti schools are remarkably unafraid of creatures who would inspire terror in many a city child's heart. What is even more remarkable than the lack of fear is the tremendous sensitivity, the receptivity, the balanced living in such environments gives them. In a world where an increasingly larger percentage of humanity is wrapped up in a cocoon of protection, it is truly wonderful to see children break through and fly with the two wings of freedom and understanding into a new world. A world which sees the stupidity of division, conflict, and fragmentation, a world awakening into intelligence. When children, when people are secure, their energies come tumbling out. And it's when you're insecure, knotted up within yourself, that's when your energies all go into constantly shielding yourself, defending yourself from imagined threats and so on. I think to some extent, the, the children here are free of that.
the basic question we all have while Krishnaji was there today and perhaps later is what does one do with this tendency of the mind to crystallize itself into something which is give, which gives it security that security it can find in various ways and i think even today in our schools this problem remains the challenge remains i don't think uh, i would like to speak in terms of achievements uh, they are there for anybody to see what is more important than all the achievements of the krishnamurti schools is this question can the teacher keep himself free of the limiting forces which are there in the environment and within his own being can we be awake to this can continually learn, even as they teach. We have all the facilities of academics, of laboratories and libraries and everything. So children do the both very easily. In fact, they do it much easily and without any pressure. 
So th though the exams cannot be avoided because examination is important, physics is important, mathematics needs to be done, whether you like it or not, you have to appear for that exam. So all this is kept into mind. But just because the exams are there in class 10, you can't allow the childhood of a child to be spoiled right from class 1 to class 8 and bring up that fear right from the beginning. I think we need not bring up that fear. Children. Instead of setting up ashrams, he created schools where children could learn in a nurturing, physical, mental, an emotional environment. While granting the importance of academic excellence, the importance of inquiry and skills and all that we've talked about, he refers to the problem of the human condition, the human predicament. He would like us not to think so much in terms of individual differences, but of how the whole of humanity suffers from fears, anxieties, hopes, ambitions and for him both the educator and the child must explore the world of the within. Which is why he talks not so much of the cultivation of thought but of the limitation of thought. Which is why he's so concerned about One of the highest peaks of consciousness in our age, J. Krishnamurti spent his life sharing his love of truth with everyone he encountered. The awakening of intelligence, an intelligence which can come into being only through pure observation, only through inquiry, through silences, through freedom, through affection. Located in several picturesque locations in India and abroad, the Krishnamurti schools are vibrant and alive. Their laboratories, where the child's questioning mind can investigate, explore and learn. Free from fear, prejudice, dogma and the sterility of rote learning. And where teachers too 